In this video I want to show you how to read zero and one dimensional variables from a GDX file using MATLAB. And together with that I also explain you how to really get the value and how to get a list of all unique element labels. So now let's read GDX files with MATLAB. Mm, you're probably familiar with this code from previous videos. I extended it a little bit with some variables and some equations just to make it a proper model with some results. The objective variable are the total costs and we can run this model and then we get a result 28,000. Um, how to get this number into MATLAB? Uh, with this command, I created a GDX file, which we can see here. And here are the total costs, 28,000. We can also see the number of devices that were chosen, zero, um, from board, type of boiler one, zero, boiler two, zero, but two types of boiler three for the economically optimal solution. Mm. Okay, and here's MATLAB. So here we can make a script to read GDX files. Mm. I would first of all add the MATLAB path. So MATLAB can definitely find the RGDX, like read GDX um, tool. And everything that is stored in a GDX file is, for MATLAB is kind of stored in a struct. So we have to define a struct to read anything out from this file, which we can easily make. Um, and we should give it exactly the name from what we want to read out. So if we want to read the total cost, tot cost, then this is how our struct should be called. And then we can use the rgdx function. Um, we type the name from the gdx file, which is GAMS optimization, GAMS to MATLAB. And here we type the struct that we want to read out, so x as we just defined. And I save that. Run the script. And then we can see, okay. Um, X became the struct tot cost. XY um, is tot cost, is a variable, dimension zero has the value 28,000. Um, okay. If you just want to have the value, we can type xy.val and we'll get just the value, um, which, is, which is exactly the same like over here. Now, what if we want to read out a one-dimensional variable? As for example, number, uh, dimension one, three entries, and that's the three devices, boiler one, two, and three. And the model suggests should suggests to purchase two boilers of type three. How to read that out? Nothing easier than that. Just make the struct called number, run the script, and there we go. Um, X is now number. And the xy is number, variable, and the values is 7, 2. That's maybe the only surprising thing. Why is the value of xy uh, a vector with the entry 7 and 2? 2 is most probably the number of border 3. But why is there a 7? We can get a hint on that if we check out the unique element labels. Um, for example, with this command, 
we see okay there is a 1 by 18 cell array and if we type it with brackets and the one then we get a list of labels unique element labels and now we can see one two three four five six seven okay well uh, three is the seventh element in this vector with unique element labels and that's why the value of the variable numbers is described with seven and two so seven is the number of the the order number of the unique element label and two is the actual value of um, this element in the variable number and maybe to show even better what happens here we could um, I will just force the model to turn out a solution where two boilers are chosen two different types we can make number the minimum of boiler one has to be one so now the, the algorithm has to purchase at least one boiler type one and one boiler type three to run the model and let's run the script see the result okay let's see whether that fits to the gdx file now it's one boiler type one one boiler type three that's what it shows here um, again the list of all unique element labels in here we can see <clears throat> one two three four five is number boiler number one six seven is boiler number three I find this a very <clears throat> inconvenient format for any kind of post processing and also for quick reviews I don't always want to count what is the fifth uh, unique element label what is the seventh and then compare um, what I would wish as a result is something like number and then I get a vector here that looks maybe Like that this is a result like I would want to have it and that would be easy for post-processing I could run run it many many times and have many columns and then I could see uh -huh, from here it will change um, to two or uh, boiler two will change to one or whatever whatever would happen um, I want to have all the zeros in it and I want to see the full length of the variable and I also actually don't need the order number of the unique element labels and in the following videos I will describe scripts that can generate such a vector uh, without manually checking okay does this variable have three elements or whatever and uh, I show a script that can do that for one dimensional but also for I show another script for a two dimensional and a script for three dimensional variables but to be precise it's all functions so you can later on easily implement them in um, into a loop and make sensitivity sensitivity analysis and I just remember one more thing did you did you ever wonder where the heck this order comes from? Why is evening at the end and why does it start with the density and um, the order is defined by the order in which you load the sets and the parameters in two camps. So this line defines the order. List one. 
that will be here is the first this is going to be read in so it starts with a density altitude inflation project duration and uh, second is the list of devices that is boiler one two three and that's exactly what we can see here as the order density altitude inflation project duration boiler one two three and then it continues with Let's check it out in GAMS. Uh, specifications. And the specifications are maximum supply, cost, investment cost, which we can see here again. Uh, maximum supply, cost, investment cost. So it's really not about this order. Um, that's just a bunch of information. But this order will influence what you see here in MATLAB.